Hey, what's going on guys, it's Anton here. So we're back with a brand new video. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to use GitHub code spaces. We're pretty much gonna explore GitHub code spaces. I've actually already took a look at it already, but this is a very new feature. I don't think everyone has access to it. You actually needed to sign up for it about a couple months ago. And I just got an email saying that uh, it was here, at least for me. I know some people have had access to it oh, a little over a while ago. Now, if you guys want to actually uh, get access to code spaces, you can go over to github.com slash features slash code spaces, and you can click on request early access, and they'll give you a lot of information over here. So what exactly is code spaces? Well, it's pretty much just a cloud hosted Visual Studio code. So instead of having to download Visual Studio code, you can now write and edit code in the browser. You can pretty much run the app and you can access it directly in your browser as if you're doing it on localhost. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. You can install themes, plugins, whatever it is that you want on the browser of Visual Studio Code. So that sounds pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go ahead and first create a new repository. Now keep in mind, I think this is still in like beta. So a lot might change later. So we're gonna create a new repository first and I'll initialize it with readme because if you don't have anything in this repository, it's gonna tell you, uh, you, can't, you can't create the code space. So let me add a readme, let's create the repository. So once we have created this repository, there we go, then we'll code space. We're gonna go over to code spaces and we're gonna click on create your first code space. So you can see that my code space is right over here. If you can't find your code space, you probably need to search for it, but make sure when you search for it, you prefix your username first slash and then the repository name. For some reason, it shows other people's code space. I don't know why. We'll just click on demo code space right over here. And you can see that we have a master branch. And like I said, if this doesn't appear for you, you just need to make sure your repository is not empty. So we're gonna click on create code space and it's going to bring us to this page. And you can see that's going to initialize a code space for us. I think it uses Docker because you can see in the logs right over here, it does say something about Docker. So I'm assuming that pretty much containerizes every single code space. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can look at the, the container. Yep. So pretty much you have, you actually have your own uh, virtual environment in a sense. Like I'll actually show you guys in just a second. Okay, so you can see that we have our code space right over here, and we have, you know, a simple Visual Studio Code uh, editor over here in the browser this time, okay? And if I click on uh, right over here, we can install some extensions. So I'm going to go ahead and install a theme. So I'm going to install Horizon Bright or Horizon Theme. And let's go ahead and set the color theme. Okay, there we go. Whoops. Okay. So there we go, we have the theme, and of course I can you know do whatever I want. It's essentially just our own Visual Studio Code in the browser. And I can also install a bunch of different packages too. Let me actually zoom in a little bit. So we can go over here to this hamburger menu, click on file, do a bunch of different things. We can also create a new terminal. And with this terminal, this is actually pretty cool. So we can actually uh, install packages. So npm install hyphen g. I'll install TypeScript and I'll install uh, TS Node as well as NodeMod. So it's pretty much you have your own, you can think of it like your own virtual private server in a sense. So it should take a couple of uh, seconds. Not sure why, okay, there we go. And if you actually type ls, you can see that we're inside our repository. If I type cd, uh, and then you can see that if I do ls hyphen al, we have a bunch of files over here. You can see we have the bash rc file, the .nvm, oh my zsh. It actually has zsh installed, I think already. And you can pretty much install uh, different uh, themes for oh my zsh. And you can see that we have uh, some nice icons over here. Pretty cool. Okay. And now I can run npm init hyphen y. So I'll initialize this repository with uh, patch.json. And let me go ahead and just install express. And I'm gonna go install uh, types for express as well as types for node because we are using TypeScript. Okay, there we go. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Okay, there we go. And now I can just simply create an app.ts file and I'll import express from express const app express. Whoops. And let me just do app.listen. You can also set environment variables too, I think. I haven't tried setting environment variables, but I urge you guys to try it yourself. And let me go ahead and just set up a simple get. And you can also install Prettier or any formatter. Again, any uh, extension that you want to install, it'll work just fine. And now let's actually set up a simple TS config. Otherwise it's not gonna work. We're gonna get an error. So let me also set up a dev script. So we'll do nodemon exec ts node 
again, I'm just showing you guys how this works. I'm not going to explain every little thing. I just want to show you guys the whole point of uh, code space. So I'm going to run my app right now. Well, let's see. It says fail to parse JSON. I might have accidentally added uh, something right over here. Yep. Okay. Let's try that again. So now how do we actually access the app? Well, we can actually go right over here into this uh, computer icon over here and you can actually forward a port. So you can forward whatever port you want. So if you want to use, uh, let's say port 3000 for your app, you can. So type port 3000 and then you give it a name. We'll just call this Express API or Express App. Okay, there we go. So Express App is running on port 3000 and you can pretty much open this right now. Okay. And it's going to take a little bit to actually connect you to the app. So just give it a, give it a couple seconds. And here you go. And I can also set up another route. So I'll just say hello. And if I go over here, it'll just auto update because we're using NodeMon. There you go. All right, so one more thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a git ignore and I'm going to ignore the node modules folder. And we're going to pretty much just stage all of our changes. So we'll just say uh, simple express API. We'll commit the changes and then we will push. So let's just push and it will just push to our GitHub repository. Uh, okay, so now if I refresh, you can see all of our code right over here. So this is pretty cool. So let's say if you just want to edit in the browser and you don't want to keep, you know, pulling, this will, you know, work really well. Okay. If you want to collaborate with other people, you can have them use live share. The thing is you, I don't think you can share the, uh, the actual live app itself, at least as, at least not that I know of, but maybe there might be a way. If you guys do know, feel free to leave a comment down below. But uh, yeah, I pretty much like looked through and I couldn't find anything that would uh, allow the user to actually visit the app, but you can definitely use live share, have them, you know, join the collaboration session and then you guys can edit the code together and then you'll be able to see the live uh, app over here. So that's pretty much it for this whole demonstration. Just wanted to show you guys how uh, code spaces work. I know probably not a lot of you uh, have code spaces, but I figured I would just introduce to you guys what it is so that you can actually go ahead and request early access. And then if you actually do get it very soon, you can actually start using this. But this is pretty awesome. I'm very excited for the future of this new technology. I think it will definitely make it a lot easier for people who don't have computers to actually code because I'm pretty sure this would work on your iPad, your tablet, your phone, and you can deploy the app uh, live to, let's say, uh, Heroku. You probably don't even need to deploy it because you can actually just run the app directly directly over there and you could probably just avoid having a timeout. So that's pretty much it and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.